In this section, we will introduce a new technique called bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is closely tied to this well-known statistical area, statistical inference. Without going into too much detail, we can say that with the statistical inference, we try to infer a population parameter or make a conclusion about an aspect of a population by considering some smaller size samples from this large population. For example, we may be interested in finding out the mean of a parameter of a population or standard deviation uh, or some type of proportion of that population. We usually use some standard techniques for those, and with these techniques we can get an error measure or error range with a certain uh, confidence level. Let's have an example for this statistical inference. For example, let's assume we have a product line or assembly line, and we want to apply some quality control on our product. And let's assume that we can just measure the weight of our product to understand whether it is a high quality or it is just a low quality uh, production. We could go and measure every single production item, but this may be really costly or sometimes it may be impossible to do. What we can do instead, we can get some batches of fixed size, multiple of them, and then we can measure the uh, mean weight for those. And then we can apply this statistical methods to have an error range with a certain confidence level. And then this will give us an overall idea about our product's uh, quality level. These statistical methods or the classical statistical methods, they usually make some assumptions. For example, they may assume that we have a normal distribution with our population, or sometimes they assume that we have a large uh, enough size for these samples. If our problem falls out of these assumptions, we will need to use some alternative techniques, and bootstrapping is one of them. Also, these standard techniques, they usually work with some parameters such as mean, standard deviation, proportions, or difference of means. And if you are looking for a different metric such as median, we usually have to find out a different technique. Let's assume we have this example. We are looking at house prices at a certain area, and we want to know the median price of a house in that area. We can compute the mean directly from our samples, but in this case, we don't know what's our error range. There are a few issues related to this simple problem, so let's go through them one by one. If it was the mean, we could make some assumptions with these standard statistical techniques, and we could apply some of those. But house prices usually do not satisfy this normal distribution assumption. They usually have a tail. And for the mean, again, there are no easy ways to calculate those population parameters. With these problems, we usually refer to some alternative methods, and bootstrap is one of them. If you're interested in diving deeper into these standard statistical techniques and also have a better understanding of how we apply bootstrapping, you can follow this link here. We will apply bootstrapping in machine learning in the area of ensemble learning. So far, the most complex tree algorithm that we have discovered was the extra trees algorithm. This is nice, but this is a very tree-specific algorithm. How can we make sure that we have an assembled model which makes use of multiple different models at the same time? We'll apply bootstrapping in the assembling technique. In general, if there is no explicit formula for the distribution of errors, and in machine learning there almost never are, there will not be any simple way to try to understand the accuracy of these measures. However, if we had infinite amount of data, we could apply some of these techniques. For example, we could measure the quantity in many independent data sets of the same fixed size. Then we could use an empirical distribution to provide the overall distribution to us. Usually we don't have infinite amount of data, but we have a data set of size maybe a thousand, and this time we have to work with that amount of data. Here's an example. Assuming this example, we have, again, some simulation of these house prices. Assume we have 1,000 of the medians of these house prices, 
and we are just going to look at these independent data points here in terms of their medians. When I look at the histogram of these medians, I see this type of a distribution here. By the way, there is this notebook here, which you can also follow through. Over here, we are dealing with 1,000 data points. And how do we make sure that we can expand this single fixed size data set and treat it like a 1,000 independent data set or 1,000 independent data sets? Here comes the sampling with replacement. With these, we treat our initial data as a, the true distribution. And then we draw synthetic data sets from this. And we do this with sampling with replacement. Let's assume this is our data set with the median of five. And we just draw samples from this by also taking, putting these samples back to this original data set every time. So here is the first result. As you can see, we may have some duplicates here because we are sampling with replacement. Here's the second one, third one, and it goes all the way. And the distribution of these medians give us a guess at the true distribution of the medians over a data set of this size. When we look at the distribution of the medians this time of these bootstrap samples, what we see is a histogram looking like this. And again, if you compare this to 1,000 independent data sets, we see some similarity here. So with the bootstrapping technique, we can create a larger data set by drawing samples with replacement from an original data set and again kind of preserve the same distribution and later we will use this bootstrapping technique with the assembled models to create this type of multiple synthetic data sets here is the comparison between the real world and the bootstrap world in the real world, we have an unknown probability distribution, and we have an observed random sample with those, and we try to interest a statistic of interest, such as like median or mean or standard deviation. In the bootstrap world, we have an empirical distribution. So this is the distribution of our original sample. Then we get bootstrap samples from those. Then we calculate this from our bootstrap samples. And again, this becomes our uh, estimation of this overall parameter. 